Welcome everybody. My name is Tim Sandy and I'm a VMware Technical Partner Manager and Systems Engineer. VMware has several assessments available to our partners to help them show the value and sell VMware solutions. But the newest of our assessment tools is the Hybrid Cloud Assessment. I will provide an overview of what it is, what it provides, and how to accomplish doing one. So let's get started. So real quick, the agenda here that I'm going to be covering in this training is first we'll introduce the Hybrid Cloud Assessment, or HCA for short, and we'll compare how it works with the vSphere Optimization Assessment, or the VOA. Next, we'll cover the prerequisites for the HCA. Then we'll go through a high-level installation of vRealize Business for Cloud, which is used to conduct the HCA. We will then walk through the process of running and reviewing the HCA report available in vRealize Business for Cloud. Followed by, I will cover several FAQs. And finally, I will provide you with some resources to get additional information on the HCA. So let's get started with the overview of the HCA. So VMware is proud to introduce our new VMware Hybrid Cloud Assessment, or HCA, an enhanced proof of concept that analyzes the customer's existing data center to give them actual what-if scenario insights about cost. In fewer than three hours, you can install and deploy the vRealize Business for Cloud 7.2. Then you can run a report which includes a public and private cloud costing comparison, private cloud costing, a fine-grained cost analysis, basically what is the cost of the resources consumed by each BU, which is business unit, role, or whatever, to address your customer's critical cost questions. All this information enables IT leaders to make more informed buying decisions. We have a number of complementary assets that include an install walkthrough, report walkthrough, and the readout of the walkthrough. Links to these and more can be found in Partner Central and will be provided in a link at the end of this presentation. The hybrid cloud assessment informs cost conversations, while the vSphere optimization assessment, or VOA, informs efficiency and performance conversations. The combination of these two assessments, the HCA and the VOA, now provide another key benefit which is understanding the reclamation opportunities with cost for private clouds. The hybrid cloud assessment is quick and easy, but there are some prerequisites you need to know about. So as a baseline, the vRealize Business for Cloud 7.2, which is the product used in the hybrid cloud assessment, supports collecting data from VMware vCenter Server 4.1 or later. However, the OVA install requires a minimum ESX host version of 5.5, and VOA will only support vCenter Server 5.5 or later. So for simplicity's sake, it is recommended that the hybrid cloud assessment be conducted in a 5.5 or later environment only. A checklist document is available also for you to share with customers to prepare for the hybrid cloud assessment. It also covers requirements for the vSphere optimization assessment if needed. Be sure to verify that all the prerequisites are met before performing a hybrid cloud assessment, preferably a few days ahead of the assessment. The checklist documentation can be found on Partner Central on the hybrid cloud assessment page. Now that we have prerequisites covered, let's look at the hybrid cloud assessment installation. VMware vRealize Business for Cloud, or VRBC for short, is a product used to perform the hybrid cloud assessment. It comes in an LVA format that can be downloaded from VMware. It is recommended to have this download on hand before beginning the HCA to save time. vRealize Business for Cloud deploys in a single appliance with an embedded database. The cost reference database provides baseline cost information and can be updated automatically or manually through the appliance user interface. There are three installation options for vRealize Business for Cloud. But for the hybrid cloud assessment, essentially, we're going to use the standalone option, which is recommended. It provides the quickest and least intrusive path for installation. So we're not going to really worry about the other methods. Uh, but when it comes to the hybrid cloud assessment, you're going to use that standalone instance of vRealize Business for Cloud. As stated, the standalone option is recommended or other proof of concept engagements. It does not require integration with vRealize Automation or vRealize Identity Manager. To use vRealize Business for Cloud in standalone mode, you'll need to SSH into the appliance and run a command to create a local user account. The complete vRealize Business for Cloud standalone installation video can be found also on the HCA page of Partner Central. 
When you've completed this installation and configuration per the installation video, you're ready to run the hybrid cloud assessment report. The report is provided out of the box. There's no need to install any additional content within VRBC. Let's take a closer look. Here are some of the HCA report pages. The first an example of the top consuming data centers running what-if scenarios can help customers decide which, if any, data centers to move to the public cloud. The second is a fine-grained cost analysis statement. This can help customers provide the details needed to charge others for the IT services they use. Once customers have the report, they'll be better able to understand their total cost of installed private cloud infrastructure, their data center by cost, average per VM cost by data center, expenses by business unit or group, and then one if analysis of cost comparisons across private public clouds for current and new workloads. This combination of the HCA and the VOA report page shows cost reclamation opportunities. Again, this is important as business choose public, private, or hybrid cloud deployments for particular workloads. After installation and configuration, VRBC, you must wait for the initial global synchronization to complete before you run the report. This is shown in the installation video, but these screen captures show an example of what to look for. On the left, you can see the indicator showing that the status is warning and is spinning in an update icon. This lets you know that the global synchronization is still running and hasn't completed. When you get the green check mark indicator, as in the screen on the right, you get the message showing to let you know that the global sync has completed and you can refresh the VRBC user interface and begin the process of printing the report. The HCA report overview video walks through running the report and going over the report with your customer. Please carefully review that video, which is located in Partner Central also. So I wanted to provide you with some frequently asked questions. Being that this is a new assessment, there's not a lot of information out there from, because there hasn't been a lot of people running the assessment yet. So I had reached out to our business unit that is in charge of the hybrid cloud assessment, and I got answers to a lot of these questions. So starting off, question number one, is the output customizable? And we're talking about the report, and the answer is yes, it is. Question number two, what does the cost information come from? It's a combination of publicly available and customer provided information for hardware, software, and additional costs for private cloud. Public cloud costs come from AWS and Azure websites. Question number three, does it take into account performance, availability, compliance requirements? Now, performance is part of the VOA assessment. And typically, again, you're going to be running the hybrid cloud assessment in conjunction with the VOA. And, this, and with the VOA assessment, it can be run in combination with the HCA again. I would only add that the compliance is a term you want to be cautious with. We have vSphere Configuration Manager, which provides broad compliance for regulatory and internal standard, such as PCI, HIPAA, and others. VRops only provides vSphere hardening guidelines as a compliance feature. So we're really kind of limited on from a compliance standpoint with this. Question number four, how do we get licenses to use the tool? You're going to go to Partner Central at the link provided there, and it will give you the information on how to get the license in order to do the assessment. Question number five, is there a discovery capability? HCA gets information from vCenter, doesn't discover public cloud inventory, though VRBC could discover public inventory. So again, for the HCA purpose, the assessment only it does not reach out to uh, any public cloud instances. It pulls it all from within vCenter. Now, if you purchase vRealize Business for Cloud as the full piece of software, then that can, yes, go and pull out to those public cloud instances. Question number six, does the tool take into account cost of managing infrastructure when comparing public versus private? Answer is yes. Number seven, does the tool have common hardware options and their costs? Example, Cisco UCS versus Nutanix versus AWS. And the answer is yes, it does. Question number eight, does the tool have less common cloud providers such as IBM SoftLayer or CenturyLink? No, it doesn't. Uh, for right now, we only have AWS and Azure only for cloud cost comparisons. But down the road, we will start to see others such as vCloud Air, IBM SoftLayer. So keep a lookout. Those will come into the tool soon. Number nine, does the tool assess the cost benefits of moving an IIS workload, for an example, a VM, to a pass environment like a container? 
No, container support is for intelligent operations is still being looked at. However, since the cost unit is a VM and assuming a VM would host containers, I think there would not be a financial consideration there. Question number 10. Are the cost assignments only at the VM level or can they be customized for reporting on application and database costs? Assuming apps and databases are not single instance VMs. HCA is a VM level, but VRBC can produce reports based on tags too. So customers can use tags to identify database VMs. There's no preset application pricing in VRBC, but customers tag VMs with a specific application in there and they can generate the report based on that. Question number 11, can the assessment report or tool be white labeled for our partners? No, it can't at this point in time. It's strictly uh, out of the box type of running report and it is branded how it is. Question number 12, would the tool or report be able to report on recommendations? Example, the report produces recommendations and then we can use the VMware stack to implement those recommendations, automated or manual. Answer, HCA assessment when combined with the VOA assessment would provide reclamation cost saving opportunities. With that question there, we need a little more information, uh, but that was the reply that I got. So question number 13, would the report take into account changing price models for public cloud when generating reports? The answer is yes. The public cloud costs are pulled from AWS and Azure websites and updated into the VRBC reference database. The information from this database is used for cost calculations. Question number 14, would the link work in cases where there is no on-premise VMware environment? So, for example, somebody that doesn't have their own local data center, no private cloud, they have everything running on a cloud instance. So, unfortunately, you can't run the HCA because this is a VMware virtual appliance and it needs to be installed on a vSphere host. And it needs to be done that in the local data center. It can't be done out into a cloud instance. Fifteen. What sort of basic permissions would the tool need to run? Blanket administrative permissions for the public cloud, or can it be an IAM user? No public cloud permissions required because again, HA calculates costs from moving to public cloud. It can't discover public cloud inventory. Though VRBC can discover public inventory. Again, there's that distinction there. So as many of you may or may not know, there's a hands-on labs for the VOA already. We do plan to release, uh, in conjunction with our VOA lab, hopefully a lab for the HCA to go in conjunction with the VOA. Not for sure yet, it's a potential, but keep an eye out in the next month or so, and you may find out in the hands-on labs that there is going to be a VOA lab that also has the HCA included in it as well. We also have the sales and technical sales badge that you can get from completing free online training related to the HCA. This shows people that you've had a solid understanding of the HCA and how to perform it. If you're looking for more information on the HCA, please go to www.vmware.com slash go slash hybrid cloud assessment. As you see in the image on the right hand side, the HCA page in Partner Central provides you with email templates, online training, videos, and numerous other resources for you. This slide is a resource of links for all of our different assessments that VMware has to offer. Be sure to go out to Partner Central and look at these pages uh, for each one of the assessments, which provide you, again, with those email template campaigns, training videos, documentation, and much more. So now I'm going to switch over to the demo portion, where I'm actually going to be going live into the vRealize Business for Cloud user interface as a part of the hybrid cloud assessment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the assumption that We've already deployed the vRealize business for cloud 7.2 appliance into a customer's environment. Uh, the installation of any of our virtual appliances is pretty much the same across the board. So there's really no purpose in me showing how to do that installation. So I'm basically starting the hybrid cloud assessment from the point of we've already deployed the vRealize business for cloud appliance and configured it. And now I'm just kind of more concentrating on the information that's collected, the reporting, and what the purpose is of this hybrid cloud assessment. So just understand that going in that I'm approaching it from that particular perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get logged into this standalone instance of vRealize business for cloud. Now, when I initially log in, as you see, it goes to the business management tab and it goes to this overview page. Now, 
understand that this is a demo environment that I'm collecting information from, so there's really not a lot of VMs in here. I will show a sample report of a larger environment with multiple locations and also with uh, virtual machines in the cloud. So that is going to be a sample report. It will not be related to what we're going to see in the interface here. Understand that, again, if you look here, there's really not a lot because this is a lab environment. There's only eight virtual machines in here. So just understand. But I still wanted to go around and show you the interface and show you the type of information that we can gather from vRealize Business for Cloud for this hybrid cloud assessment. So just bear with me that there's not a lot of data to present to you. So as long as you understand that, you'll still get what you need out of what I'm going to show you in the interface. So again, it goes into this overview dashboard initially. As you see here, it gives you for your infrastructure view. We have eight virtual machines here and they are in the private cloud. Because this is a lab environment, it is not connected to a public cloud instance. So that's why it's a small environment and it does not reflect in this interface anyway in any of the reports from here anything from a cloud-based environment, but don't worry, I have a sample report that does show a more realistic type of reporting type of information. Also, if you have multiple data centers, it will show you top data centers here, your infrastructure utilization, as well as your expenses across the clouds, your top business units, and then your cost versus price. So first we're gonna go down to expenses and we're gonna select the private cloud, your vSphere environment. And as you see here, it's going to give you the cost of your projected private cloud or your local data center of your vSphere environment. Your total cost over time, it's going to show you this particular graph here to show the cost over a period of time. We can scroll down and we can get more details on everything such as your cost for your hardware, your storage on demand, your licensing costs, maintenance, labor, network and facilities, and then any other additional costs. Now keep in mind that all the pre-configured cost factors that are in here, as far as the cloud instances, for example, such as Amazon Web Services and Azure Pricing or vCloud Air, we are taking the list price off of whatever they have on their website that we're using. And then for all this other stuff, such as hardware for your storage, for licensing, maintenance, we're using like industry standard numbers here. So we're just using kind of those core basic numbers. So any of the numbers that you're gonna see are using that type of data. Now it is something that you can go in and change. So if you have specific pricing, you can do that and you can set the pricing accordingly. So if you know how much maintenance is, how much your licenses is, or your hardware for certain servers, you can go in and change that to where it gives you a more accurate reporting on that information. So for the private cloud here, it gives you a basic overview of all these individual different areas here. Going down from an operational analysis, we have the private cloud again, but under an operational analysis. So from a CPU, RAM, storage, and OS perspective, we also see here that uh, we have three ESXi hosts, and we'll go ahead and expand that out, and there they are. It shows you the cost, also your eight running VMs as well, or you can even go over to storage here, and we'll see here. And then from a consumption standpoint, we can go look at pricing and charges, and we'll look at pricing here. Now, as you see here, um, we can go in and do some editing on the prices and for these policies. Also, uh, for the public clouds, hybrid cloud, we can adjust these accordingly. Now, for us, it's going to be more so being that we're just looking at a private cloud, local data center, so to speak. We're going to be uh, pulling everything from vCenter here, of course. Now, you're also going to see whenever we look at any of the reporting or looking at any of the numbers, this particular environment's been broken out by departments in a company. You'll see like accounting, finance, and such, and it also has multiple regionals. So when we're looking at the reporting of the uh, more of a real world environment, you're going to see that type of separation. You can also look at charges here. So again, price per month to date, your price uh, or cost for the total under recovery, recovery margins, top business units. So if you do it by department, uh, you can see what are your top business units. And then here's the business unit lists. 
So for this demo environment that is small, we just only have finance and operations here. But when we look at the actual report, that sample report, it is for a larger environment where they have many different departments that you'll see. So going back to business management, next we're going to go down to planning. We're going to then click on cloud comparison. So we're going to compare new VMs across clouds. So here's where we get into the actual comparison of costs, where we show what it costs, in this case, per month to run on the private cloud. But then what would it cost on also your cloud instances, such as Amazon Web Services or maybe vCloud Air? So as you can see here, to run on the cloud instances with this particular environment, and again, this is a demo environment, we actually see where it's much cheaper to do it on a cloud-based environment, and the cheapest would be vCloud Air. You may find that actually it is uh, more cost effective to run a private cloud than it does in a public cloud environment, which you'll see in that sample report that I'm going to be showing you later. And then you can also compare existing VMs across clouds. And then you can also do, and again, because it's a test environment, we're not showing anything. And we only have one data center. So here we don't really have any comparison across data centers because there is only one in the sample. So going back to business management. And then we go down to reports. And here's, again, where I was talking about with reports. Because this is not connected to any cloud environments, I can't actually pull down reports directly from this. But as you can see here, you can run different types of reports, uh, cloud business analysis, vCenter server reports, vCloud director, storage, public cloud, and then you can also do some custom reporting. Now, as you see here in the administration tab, this is where we can get into the settings. Now, doing a hybrid cloud assessment, you're not going to really be messing with the settings much. You're pretty much going to use it out of the box for the most part, except for some initial command line that you're going to do once the appliance is deployed. But uh, you can see where you do have some options here for adjusting some of the settings under administration. But I just want to show you that real quick as far as the appliance goes. So going back to business management. Now at this point, what I'd like to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you this sample report that I was mentioning. Again, because that particular environment is not connected to any cloud instances there's not much in that environment, the reporting would be very boring. So this is a sample report of a much larger environment where they have split the information um, and the, the virtual machines into different departments as well as different data centers. So this is more real world like. So going down here uh, to the second page, this here gives your private cloud expenses. As you see here, your top data centers based on their expenses for the month. So here you see in this example, they have multiple data centers. As you see, their lab environment is very expensive, which uh, should not be the case on a monthly basis comparatively to any production. So that would be very helpful information to know that this lab environment is costing almost as much as their highest Day, you know, production data center and much higher than most of the other production data centers. And then based upon VMs, you'll see here they have 24 VMs on, or excuse me, 23 VMs on that lab environment. So again, this gives you just a very basic on the private cloud expenses, a quick, very high level overview of your costing. And then we can get down into more detail on the expenses across the different data centers. As you see here, first row, first column rather, is the data center name. So here's all the different data centers, the VMs in that data center, the average uh, VM profile, so virtual CPUs, memory, and storage for the VMs in that data center. And then it gives you the average cost per VM and then end of month cost. So as you see, you can go through here and look to see that your end of month cost, your Israel data center is the most expensive, but then your Kubernetes, and then your third is your lab. So again, showing back uh, on the previous screen of this report, you know, the lab is in the top two or three of the data centers, and that's typically not acceptable for a lab-based environment unless you're a company that just does massive amount of software development. This is just more detailed, a little more detailed information. That first page was just the overview. There's the second page that continues on for the detailed overview. Now here is the showback statement. So here you're going to see the different business unit name. This is where, like I said, in this particular report, they had separated out by business unit uh, from a costing perspective. As you see here, the administrative business unit is showing the highest amount of cost. 
and the trend versus previous month. Now, keep in mind, this is the first time this report was run, and it was in a, I believe, kind of a demo environment. So whenever you're on the very first report, all of these are going to show the, the red upward facing arrow because the trend is going to go up because this is the very first report. Now, if this was actually a report that's been run several times in a real production environment with Be Realized Business uh, for Cloud, you would see some might be you know green um, and normal, where others might be down, others might be up. So just keep that in mind as far as when you're looking at this report. And then we have business unit expense again in more detail. So just like our previous one did for the cost of the data centers by business unit, this goes into more detail. So looking at the business unit expenses and details, you have the business unit name, the number of VMs, again, the average VM profile for vCPU memory and storage, the average VM cost, and then the end of month cost. So administration is the most expensive business unit out of their entire environment and all their data centers. So that may be normal. That may not be. I would guess that that would not be normal for most companies. So that might bring to light some issues that they need to address from an administrative standpoint. And that's just to continue on second page for the BU details. Then we get into the cost savings opportunity. This shows where in what business unit we have the highest potential for cost savings where we can reclaim some resources. So again, administrative was the highest cost and it also has the highest potential of reclaiming some money from there. Now we get into the cloud comparison between your vSphere private cloud versus different public cloud environments. So as you see, as I was saying previously that when we looked at it, within vRealize Business for Cloud in that demo environment, it was showing it was cheaper to run those VMs, those eight VMs out on a cloud instance, either AWS or vCloud Air. Well, in this particular case, with this environment from this report, you'll see that their, their private cloud environment only costs $18,055 a month. Well, if you look at Amazon Web Services, it's gonna be $109,000 more to put it on Amazon. Or total cost of 127,000, and then Microsoft Azure, it will be a total cost of 79,000, which is an increase of 61,000. So as you can see in this particular example, it's actually cheaper for them to run a private cloud rather than migrating any of their workloads out to the public cloud and running it out there. Based on the particular customer, it could go either way. It just depends on their environment, their virtual machines, what they need, how they use them. Uh, there's a lot of variables there, so it could go either way. And then for the cloud comparison, we go into the details of the cloud comparison between the private and the public cloud. So again, data center name, VM count, the average profile, the current cost, the cost on Amazon, the cost on Azure. Now, right now, our cost comparison for between the private and public cloud is only with Amazon Web Services and Azure for the public cloud environment. Now, that will change in the near future to where we will start adding additional cloud providers such as vCloud Air, maybe IBM SoftLayer, and any others. But for right now, at this point in time, since it is a brand new release product, it is only going to do comparisons to public clouds for AWS and Azure. So just be aware of that, but that will change. So keep your eye open. And then we have just the, the continued page of the details. So that is a sample report of the hybrid cloud assessment. So it gives you a lot of high level comparison information, but then it also gives you detailed ones by either business unit VMs. So you can see that you can get a lot of very good information from the hybrid cloud assessment as to whether or not it's beneficial to run your environment either as a private cloud, as a local data center, or potentially move workloads out onto Amazon Web Services, uh, Microsoft Azure, or some other cloud provider. Now I wanted to show you one other thing. Going back under the consumption section here, and then pricing and charges, I wanna click on that because I wanna show you something. So then if we go to the business unit list, and then we go to the edit, and go to edit business hierarchy, you're gonna see here vCenter, okay? We can go and click the pencil to edit the vCenter business hierarchy. Now, what I wanted to show you here was that uh, right now we're currently pulling information based upon tax 
for the different business unit. We're doing that again here. If you see the radius is selected, uh, categorized by tags. So select the VMs with the tag family business unit. So that's how if we if you saw that sample report, we showed you all the different business units and the information associated to that. So in that example of that report, they had this default setting as well to do it by tax. Now you can change it to other ways. If you look, you can categorize it by folders. So again, vRealize business is part of the install process is connecting to the vCenter server. Once it connects to the vCenter server, it pulls all that information from the vCenter server and all those objects. You can also do this, select all folders at vCenter server hierarchy level. That would be the selection that you want. This one is for doing specific folders within your vCenter environment. Again, by tags is the default. And then you can also uh, categorize by virtual machine name. So if you want to just do it by virtual machine names, you can do that as well. So from maybe a business unit, if you got certain predefined business, uh, virtual machine names for each business unit. Maybe you want to do it that way. So there's different ways in which you can have be realized business for cloud represent that collection of virtual machines, either by business unit, however is best for you when it comes especially to the reporting aspect. So I just wanted to show that to you real quick. That that's something that you can change that may be beneficial, especially once you run that final report for the end customer. So that completes the quick overview of vRealize Business for Cloud Appliance in the context of doing the hybrid cloud assessment, which is our new VMware assessment. And again, we do recommend that we run the uh, VOA, the vSphere optimization assessment, along with the hybrid cloud assessment. That way it gives you a really good picture of what your operational expenses is and from a performance aspect from the vSphere optimization assessment, but then also from a costing comparison between your private cloud and other public clouds, which is where the vRealize business for cloud comes into play. So uh, hopefully this gives you a better idea of not only what vRealize Business for Cloud offers, but more specifically in the context of the hybrid cloud assessment, what it can do to show your end customers what kind of cost and comparison information you can gather, and then hopefully potentially sell the vRealize Business for Cloud solution to them as well so that they can on, in an ongoing fashion, continue to monitor uh, their costing information and so then they can move potentially some of their workloads out to the cloud because it makes more financial sense to do so. So that completes my presentation for today. As you see here, I have links to my social media outlets where you can find other useful VMware resources. With that, I thank you and have a wonderful day.